Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today's video is about cats. No, not the ones that go meow. Catalytic converters. Let's get started. Many of you have probably already seen Hoovy's Garage video about this Ferrari 456 where it had a catalytic converter meltdown. We're going to look into why that happened today, some of the common issues with cats. Number two, what makes them so valuable? Why do people cut them off and steal them? What's there that they were trying to get at? And three, more of the time frame issues on cars like this. Ordering parts is what I'm getting at. And really with the theft problem that's going on with catalytic converters, there is really a long delay for any brand of car. I have witnessed this myself with a few vehicles, one of them being a Mini Cooper. It took us three or four months to get a catalytic converter for a car that should have had one in two or three days or less. It's, they're just being hacked off left and right, so the demand is really high. And as you saw in Hoovy's Garage video, they did have a meltdown on this car. We're going to actually look into that and see what it looks like. But first, let's get this thing up in the air and see where are these things located. So right here where the drive shaft goes to the transmission in the back, and yes, the transmission is in the back on this one kind of like a Porsche 928 or something. You can see the two downpipes that come off of each exhaust manifold here. They bolt on here and they were located right about in here and connected to a resonator right here. So they were right next to each other in this area. And I imagine when they failed, they got glowing red hot. It just, you can't see it. You don't realize it until it's too late. But this is where the meltdown happened, right in this area. Let's go ahead and head on over to the actual cats. No, not meowing cats. So Hoovy was actually doing some filming with his 456 one day, and it was a really hot day outside. And it started misfiring, doing weird things, and running really strange, and finally it just stalled. It had different warning lights and things going on, and it was just having a lot of trouble. When he let it cool down a few days later, it would actually start up and still run. It just didn't run as well as it used to. It seemed like it was down on power. He thought that there was an injector problem or something going on or ECU. He didn't know what it was. So he brought it here and we did some diving in and we found the cats were completely melted down. These are the two catalytic converters off of this vehicle. And specifically the passenger side that had the meltdown. The other one was probably on its way out, but the passenger side had the major meltdown. If I take the driver's side one, wiggle it back and forth. I can hear powder kind of moving around if you can hear it. It kind of indicated to me that it's it got really hot but not a meltdown. Now let's listen to the one that did have a meltdown. You can actually hear the catalyst inside of there just bouncing around the catalyst is like a ceramic honeycomb with various metals and things on there that are infused into the ceramic. Catalytic converters can fail in many different ways. They can melt down and clog and make it where the engine won't run. They just physically can't get the exhaust out. Or just like on the Nissan Armadas, they can break down and actually there's a small amount of suction where they should be exhaust at certain parts of the engine running. It can actually pull fragments of the ceramic into the engine and completely decimate the engine and wipe it out. I've seen a few of those. It's scary. They can also fail and just don't meet emission standards anymore. They haven't had a meltdown. It'll just have a check engine light, PO420 catalyst efficiency threshold, and you won't meet state inspection if that's what you have in your state. We actually had a video like that with my dental guy, Taryn. He had a Subaru in here. It was here for a wheel bearing, and just while it was in the shop, it met the threshold to fail catalyst emissions standards, and the check engine light came on. We got it fixed, but that was very, very annoying for both people involved, but we got it handled. Luckily, that one was in stock, and we got it taken care of very quickly. 
it can be a very time consuming thing to get a catalytic converter. Why are they on there? I've actually talked to this several people. I work out at the gym. I got friends, gym buddies at the YMCA. I was talking to a guy one day and I always thought people just knew what they did, but I have learned that most people really don't know why are they there. As I had thought, everybody probably knows what these do. They don't. A lot of people don't even know exactly why they are there. They were actually introduced in the late 70s, mid 70s, late 70s, vehicles started getting them. And they are only there for one reason, government mandated emissions. If the government wasn't involved, car makers would not be putting these on today. They would not be necessary. They're not necessary for the engine to run. They're only there to clean your exhaust. And the way they do that is, as exhaust gases passes over the honeycomb, it gets really hot, so hot that it burns any unburnt fuel and takes care of kind of scrubbing and cleaning the exhaust. So there, that way there's a lot less carbon emissions coming out of the back. You can see these have heat shields on them because they do get very hot. They can get so hot that if you park in a grassy field, a dry grassy field, you can catch the field on fire. I've seen that happen before. It's, it's pretty crazy. But just keep in mind, all they do is clean your exhaust, and the only reason they're there is because the government mandated them to be there. Now, these things that are sitting before me are covered by federal law. You cannot cut them off just because you don't want them. You could get fined heavily, ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 per catalytic converter. It's, it's nothing to joke around with. It's, a lot of people will cut them off if they have issues, just put a straight pipe, but you will have a check engine light. And if you live in a state with emissions testing, you will fail the test and they will make you fix it. So now we know why they're there. Let's answer the question, why are people stealing them? Most of us probably know why, but a lot of us I know don't, based on some of the experience I've had and questions I've been asked. Some people, they know they're being stolen, they know they're worth money, but why? Why is it worth money? Let's go ahead and cut open the bad one. We'll take a look at the damage, also evaluate what makes them so valuable. I searched for a few minutes and I actually can't find my safety glasses. I'll use my UV yellow ones. It kind of puts me in a good mood to cut. Let's see if I can get it adjusted right here. It doesn't fit over my glasses very well. There we go. Let's get started. So I mentioned these have a heat shield. That's what I just cut off, the actual little heat shield. We haven't dived into the actual cat yet, but that's the next step. Let's do that. Okay, so we basically gutted this thing like a fish. We filleted it and opened it, kind of like a shape of a letter I. The things that we cut and these pipes and things, that's not what the thieves are after. They don't care about that. But it takes too long to get to the actual things that they want. And in fact, the thieves aren't going to do the cutting open just like we did. They're just gonna sell the cat to people who buy them. They will cut it open and get some of the pieces out. This is what they're after. This is a ceramic honeycomb structure. You can see, see some of it there. And it's actually melted really, it's like hard like a rock, but that's the metal. That's the precious metals that they're after. There's specifically three precious metals that make these valuable. And again, they're in here not in here. That is platinum, like a platinum ring, like your wedding ring is platinum. There, that's in here. Palladium and also rhodium. 
Those three metals are extremely rare and extremely expensive. It is the metals that are required to make this system work, to make the catalyst work. Unfortunately, it gives a high value, even to this leftover meltdown here. It's just, the metal's still there. It's still salvageable. So now when somebody says, my buddy got his cat stolen, or you read in the newspaper or whatever on the news, so-and-so had three or four cats stolen at their dealership, now you know, ultimately this is what they're after. And they can sometimes get hundreds or even thousands of dollars for this crusty old stuff. So in the heart of this thing, you can see that it was a kind of a honeycomb structure there. You can see the meltdown. It looks like a nuclear meltdown. Typically, when these are not melted down, it'll look like this upper portion like that all the way through, a nice flat surface, but this one's obviously melted. So what would cause this thing to melt down like this? It's nothing that currently happened to his car. If you watch Hoovy's Garage video, we'll have a link in the description to the video when he bought this car. It came from Dubai with faulty fuel pumps. And when I took them apart to do my fuel pump conversion that I do on the, the 550s and the 456, the pumps had been cobbled together with cork, and I, I don't even know where, what parts they used. It was a disaster inside of the fuel tank. It was really, really bad. You guys have seen videos on the 550s and also on the 456s that I use a Kia fuel pump. I modify the basket. It all mounts up and bolts up. It's the same gallons per hour, same fuel pressure, everything that's supposed to be for these cars. I've done a few already and they're still running around happily. Very, very happy with the, the results. This one had previous damage even before Hoovy bought this car. And I believe we did get it running right, we get everything properly running, but the damage had already been done and slowly over time it just, it wasn't functioning like it's supposed to and the meltdown just continued. Until it culminated to the day that he had all kinds of issues, it wouldn't run right, it stalled on him, and here we are with this situation here. The driver's side cat is still functional, but I showed you guys, it still had powder sounds, kind of powder inside of there. It was on the way out. And that makes sense because when this car first came to my shop, it was the passenger side pump that was so cobbled badly together. And here's the result. The engine run very lean. It wasn't getting the pressure it's supposed to. And these got way, way overheated. And it probably got to the point where it's glowing red hot. If Tyler would have looked under his car the day that he had trouble, I imagine he would have seen a glowing red this. That's kind of dangerous. It could cause a fire. Ferraris already have enough trouble as is. If you've watched his recent videos on his 599, it's having a fuel leak issues. It's begging to burn down. It says, please give me a spark. I just want to catch fire. Similar situation happened to his 355. You guys know about that one that burned down. There was a recall behind the firewall that was not done. Actually, Freddie from Tavares investigated that and found that the recall parts that should have been there were not there. It was the stock system that was known to fail and burned them to the ground. And that's exactly what happened to his 355 and what could have happened to his 599. I've also fixed a few 360s with the fuel pumps that do the same thing as you see in Hoovy's video. You'll have to see that video to get details on it. But We know the problem. We know why it happened. The next step is let's order some new cats, which are not made anymore for this car as far as stock. They've been discontinued. So to go buy brand new cats for a 456 is not going to happen. You will be buying aftermarket. There's no choice. We found some online. I think they're Fab Speed. Tyler found them and it said here they are in stock, ready to go, ready to rock. He plunked down to literally thousands of dollars for them. And he didn't hear anything for three weeks. Finally, he got mad. I mean, he's been very busy filming. Finally, he got mad in email and was like, guys, what's up here? I, I plunked down thousands of dollars here. Am I getting a new cat set or not? Oh, we, we actually never had those in stock. 
we, we, uh, we actually have to make them. It's going to be another several weeks, who knows how long. And this car has been sitting and sitting and sitting. We did contact a few other manufacturers of the cats, same scenario. Yes, we can get them, we can make them. Uh, it's going to be a long wait. So you've been seeing that sitting in the background for many, many videos now. We're waiting on cats. Please show up, cats. I want to get this car done. So that's definitely one of the lessons I've learned in the shop in 2022 and probably going into 2023 in this parts scenario, is you see them online. It has a green check mark in stock. That doesn't mean anything anymore. I actually have Crazy D call people. It's like, do you actually have these? And nine times out of 10, the answer is no. So if you're budgeting time, not so much money, but time to do your own project, and you think, okay, I'll order these parts. They'll be here in a week. They may not. So make sure you budget that with time. That's just the way it is right now. It's in any shop. I know several shop owners. They're all dealing with the same scenario. It isn't that I'm choosing the wrong suppliers. It's everywhere. So knowing that going in, if you have something wrong with your car that's not detrimental, that's not going to hurt the car, you might want to wait until you get that part in your hands before you take your car apart because this will happen if you go ahead and take it apart. Luckily, bin pack was very nice and supplied me with these four post lifts, also the two posts, every, actually every lift in here. I've had zero trouble with them. I absolutely love them, especially these four posts because in this situation, I can put this car on the top, raise it up, and I still have working room under here. It's very, very nice. So hopefully that helps you guys. Now you know what is a cat, what are some of the common failures with them, and what can happen when they fail. Why are they so expensive that the thieves are stealing them? And what is the parts supply issue going on right now with getting some of the, the cats for these cars? Hopefully that helps you guys out. If you're curious what kind of tools I use in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we appreciate it. Also the angle grinder I just used is on there as well. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we're getting close to our project that I promised you at our recent boat video. And that will be a video coming soon. Thanks for watching.